It's Eldon here. Welcome back to another episode of Crazy Dad's Garage. We're going to carry on with uh, building the motor uh, that we've been working on right here. And today I'm going to start in on uh, the pistons and getting them ready to go, pistons and rods, and getting them in there. And so I'm going to flip the camera around here and tell you a little bit about what's going on right at the moment. So, a uh, small block Chevy 350, for those of you that are just catching up to us here. Uh, we had some damage in it and uh, had to re-sleeve one of the cylinders. And uh, had one completely destroyed rod and piston assembly. So, need to replace that. Um, had to buy a full set of pistons because I could, couldn't get these individually. So, I've pulled all my pistons and rods out here and giving them a real close inspection and I actually found another piston that was bad enough that I wanted to replace it so I've I've knocked it off and uh, uh, now I'm ready to get these all put back together but I also ran into another problem and that's right here this is my replacement rod that I got from the machine shop and I just uh, got ready to put the piston on it held it up next to my other rods and found out it's about an eighth of an inch short. Shorter than these other uh, standard rods here. Called the machine shop up. They said apparently the small block 400s use a slightly shorter rod than the 350s. So they're going to swap me out when I get back over there. And uh, I'll just take this one back and get the right one. So I won't be able to get all of these in today or even this time around. But we're going to do enough of it that you see the process. Uh, for what it's worth, I'm going to swap out, I'm going to leave these five pistons uh, intact, but I'm going to swap out all the rings for the new ring set that I have. Um, I've just put that uh, piston and rod together with a system that's new to me at least, and that involves heating up the end of the connecting rod and sliding the wrist pin through it. I didn't know you could do that, but uh, I just did it on that one, and it is super simple. So I am going to uh, show this on the video as I do this last one over here. So I've got uh, the piston set up. I've got the wrist pin uh, in to there. I've got the rod lightly clamped in a pair of vice grips. You don't want to do it so that you mar the vice grips. Or the vice grips. Who cares about the vice grips? So you don't mar the rod. And... I, in order to stay consistent with my other uh, piston rod packages, these pistons have a notch right there on the edge of the piston. I believe that's going to end up going to the front. But I want that notch on the opposite side of the assembly from these little ears right here. So we're going to end up with it like this. So I got the ears sticking to my right and the notch to my left. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to take, got some map gas in my torch here. Apparently you can do it with regular propane gas. But what we're going to do is we're going to heat this end of the rod up. I've, I've wire brushed it clean. But you heat this up until it starts to turn blue. You don't want it to red, glow red or anything like that, but you need it to be blue. And uh, at that point, we're going to shut the torch off and set it up here and shove the pin through it. Now, a lot of guys have been um, putting the pins in their freezer for uh, quite a while to get them uh, cold enough so that they shrink and this expands. But I just uh, did my run on the other one with the pin... Um, at normal summer temperature here it's about 90 degrees here in my shop right now and it worked uh, really slick so you don't need to do that uh, your pen does not have to be any colder than normal we're just going to heat this up it's going to expand enough we'll shove it in there and you want to get it centered when you're in there and on the other one i had plenty of time to move it around the little bit that i needed to so it all worked out good so i'm going to set the camera up in the tripod so that I can try to show you guys how I actually do this. All right, here we go. So map gas on. We're going to start heating the end of the rod up. 
This ended up taking me maybe a minute to do. Um, worked out just like all the videos I watched said it would, so not that I'm teaching anything rocket science here. Um, something I learned from watching somebody else's video. Incidentally, anytime I'm trying something new like this, I'm trying to learn something. I, uh, I will watch multiple videos instead of just one uh, because I want to make sure it's not just one person's opinion. thing blue. Now we'll set it in there, shove our pin through, get our thing centered and set it down like that so it can cool. And it was that simple. I mean, the last motor I did, I pressed the pins in and, uh, you know, it works, but it takes a lot of time. You'll get an hour into pressing eight pins into the things. But there we go, it has shrunk back onto the pin now and we're all good to go. So that's the procedure for doing that. Ultra simple. I <laughs> I love this thing. I mean, that was such a uh, massive step forward from what we've been doing that it's ridiculous. All right, see if I'm too hot to grab here. No, there we go. All right. I'll move it over to my table. Nah, I'll just leave it here. Let it cool off while I move to the other table. Hey, there's a crazy, a convenient shot of Crazy Dad's fat belly. Ta-da! I figured I better get this up here for decoration. So, I just want to demonstrate something here because I've seen this being done wrong a lot of times. There are some really cool tools for taking piston rings on and off. Um, but I don't have them, and you don't have to have them. You just need to know how to do it and exercise a little care. So I'm going to start here. This is a, my piston that I've taken the rod off of, the old one. Let's show you how to take these things off. So the natural tendency is to want to, to take them and open them up far enough to get them off. But that's when you end up breaking them. So find yourself the uh, gap in the deal in the good gravy the ring there and pull it out just enough to get it to clear the groove and then what you want to do is while you're pulling it up over the top of the piston like that you want to be pushing it around that way and that slides it out of the groove without opening it so far that you break it and so you keep working your way around there, sliding it out of the groove and lifting it as you go. And there it came loose. Now we're just going to swing it around like that and bingo, it pops right off. And that's how you get them off safely. And actually to put them back on, you just reverse that process. Let's, uh, we'll get the second one off here. So the second one is actually usually your hardest one because it's got to come up a little higher. And you've got to get it to get the friction to release enough that it's going to go ahead and come out there like that. There you go. Now it popped off like that. Um, on your oil ring, so your oil ring's a three-piece ring. It has uh, two of these little thin, really flexible uh, rings that actually hold uh, this uh center cavity ring in place and these are the scraper rings and they're actually very flexible so you don't tend to break them but you can bend them so same process to get them off uh, you need to take the top and the bottom scraper rings off first 
before you try getting the center cavity ring or whatever it's called. I'm not positive on that terminology, but this one here. So we're going to get this one out. Same basic idea, although you could, it's flexible enough, you could do other things, but just keep that system going and your rings will all come out. And very seldom have I ever broken one, and then usually it's been on an old engine where they were actually jammed in there or rusted in there. Um, so this has always worked for me. Um, I see people talk about breaking rings all the time. And I think it's because they're trying to spread them open far enough to get them to come up off straight up off the piston. And if you literally do it the way that I just showed you, you should never have a problem with this. All right, now, one other thing that I wanted to do here. You know what? I am going to double check this off camera, and I'll be back then. Okay, what I wanted to check out here was the piston ring end gap on these rings. Um, most of the time when you're running a, you know, just a stock setup, uh, the rings and stuff that you get should be just fine. And that's the way we are here. But I pulled one out, so I took a top ring and I set it down in the cylinder there. And then I took this piston and ran it all the way down there. What that does is that gets that ring square with the cylinder. And then you can see the end gap right down there. Barely. I don't know where this thing focuses. Anyway, so I measured that and it comes out to 19 thousandths. And uh, it needs to be at least 16 thousandths as the spec on these things. So I'm happy with that. So now we're going to start the process of I'm going to put all these rings onto the pistons. Um, I'm going to do one of them on camera and show you how I do it. And then we will um, come back and start installing them. Okay, every time you do this, uh, you get a set of rings. There will be an instruction sheet in with the rings. Here's mine. Got 700 different languages on it, and I finally found English and read that. And uh, the reason that you want to take time to do that is because every manufacturer designs their stuff differently. So one of the things that they that I noticed here, and this is kind of common, on the end gap of this oil expander ring, that's what they call it, I forgot about that. It's, uh, you know, folded metal up and down here. The ends of it come up like that I think you can see that there on the piston that needs to be installed with those ends pointing up not pointing down like this okay so we're going to flip that over I'm going to get that on my piston by setting it up here pushing one edge down till I get it in the groove and then doing the reverse of what I did to take them off I'm just going to work myself around that piston spreading it out just enough to get it to go around and there you go it popped into there now you want to make sure that your end gaps on these expander rings are not um, overlapping each other because they can do that. I'll see if I can get this one to do it. Um, well, now this one won't actually do it, but I've had him do it before. So I got that there. Now I'm going to take one of my scraper rings and I want to try to get the gaps in different places. And I'm going to go back and double check this later, but I want to start with them in a different place. I'm going to pull that over there, stick it down in like that, and then start working my way around. There's I go. It's coming in there. Got to make sure that expander ring works. And when you're coming down here, it's not the end of the world if you get a little scratch on here, but try to pick the end of the ring up and slide it down there so you're not scratching the side of the piston with the end of the ring. There you go. We've got the bottom scraper ring in there now, sitting on the other ring. Now we're going to get a second one. So you got my one gap there, so I'm going to move this gap over here. And just do the same process as I gently expand it enough so that it will go around 
the piston and pull that last little bit out so I don't scrape the end of it. And there I go. Now I've got the bottom oil ring is in place. Um, after that, I'm going to grab myself a second ring. And one, one of the other reasons that you want to read your instructions is to find out if there's a top or a bottom on these rings. And this one, normally you'll see one that'll have a little dot um, either carved into it or lasered onto it. This one actually is engraved with the word top right there. And I'm sure you can't see that in the video, but it's there. So the reason you do that, if you can see the end profile of the ring, it's not shaped uh, rectangularly. It has a different shape to it. So make sure you find your top. Again, put it, same basic idea. You're going to get it in there and start gently spreading that out as you work your way around there. And, and as of right now, the, the front end of it hasn't popped into the groove yet, but that's okay. It's stabilized there. So we're going to keep gently spreading the thing out as we go around. And at some point in time here, it's going to actually pop down into that ring groove. And uh, there we go. We're down into the groove. Now I can pull my end around and there we are. Second, yeah, second uh, ring is in place. Now we'll get our first one. And as I examine these carefully, there is no top or bottom on these top rings. So I'm going to put it just into place here. Start my process of gently pulling that around. And see, that one has already popped into place. And I'm going to pull around to here. Stretch mine just a little bit to try not to scratch the top of the piston or the side of the piston going down. And there we are. Oops, you know what? That one is hanging up a little bit, and I don't like that. So I'm coming back out with it. I noticed why it was doing that earlier, and I forgot to deal with it. So There. All right, so on this ring, and I've not had this happen very often, but when they were cut and trimmed, this one left a little ridge right there. And you can't see it, obviously, on camera, but I'm going to take a file here and dress that up so I knock that ridge down so it doesn't hang up in there anymore. You want to feel of it with your fingernail so you make sure... It's not there anymore. And there, we got rid of it. And I don't have it on any of the other spots. Okay, now, back into place with that one. There we go. All right, got all of my rings in place. Now, what I want to do is go in here and make sure that the ring gaps are all offset from each other so that when you have a huge amount of pressure from the compression, if your ring gaps are lined up like this, that it some of that pressure could escape, and that's lost power. So if you take and you put a gap here and a gap over on the other side, and so that each of those gaps are misaligned with each other, then it's a harder path for that you know, gas to take to escape. So I'm going to start down here with the two bottom rings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of them here on my scraper rings, just above the pin. And my other one's actually over here. But what I'm going to do, and this is just me, I'm going to move that one clear over here to where it's 180 degrees off from the other scraper ring. And so they are opposite sides from each other. Now, I'm going to take my number two ring and set it 90 degrees to those rings. So it's on a side here where the others are lined up with the pins. And then I'll flip this one around, the top ring, to where it's 180 degrees off of that one. Now, all of my ring gaps are out of alignment with each other. So that 
whatever path the gas is going to take out of there, it's a harder path for it and it can't just flow. So again, I doubt if on a low performance engine like this that that's going to make a whole lot of difference. But there you go. Now I have a piston that's ready to go back into the motor. And uh, I am going to turn the camera off here, load all the rings onto all the pistons that I've got, and then we'll show you the next step of putting these things in. All right, so we're back here. I got all the piston rings on. I've got the bearings in the pistons and they're all ready to go back together. So now we're gonna actually stick one in a hole here and uh, show you how that part works. Just uh, again, more of the little ticks, tips and tricks that help you put an engine together. And like I said before on some of the other videos, guys, I'm not a professional engine builder. I'm really dealing or being instructive here to the brand new guy. This is his first engine and he's he just wants to put it together. This is not a hot rod engine to speak of. It's kind of just a stock motor, not going to be a high RPM motor. So we're not going to do any of those things. But this is just a basic rebuild your engine um, video here. So. I have my, oops, I remembered one other thing. I gotta get here. I have my bearing grease. All right. So, all right. Got my piston here, piston rod assembly with the bearing in it, the rings are in place. Now what I need to do is lube this up just a little bit. You want some oil on here so that you, uh, You're not uh, uh, doing this cold, uh, doing it unlubricated. So I'm going to do that, uh, make sure that the piston is lubricated up. <coughs> Excuse me. No, that's not COVID. Okay. Uh, we'll put a little bit of grease on the bearing. ourselves uh, ready to go there. I'll get my uh, bearing cap with grease put in it and my connecting rod cap. We're all set there. And we also want to get a little bit of oil in the cylinders. So a real high-tech way of doing it here. There, I have my cylinder oiled up. Yeah, I know. There's other ways to do it. But again, guys, one of the things that I'm... This goes right along with the crazy-ass garage philosophy here. I don't have the high-tech tools that it takes to assemble an engine. And a lot of guys don't. So what we're doing here is the low buck way of doing things. So I've got uh, tools that work, um, that are, uh, you know, effective to do the basics here and uh, get this thing back together. So I have an old style ring compressor. We do, we put the piston in there and I'll see if I can show you here and then I crank the, actually I got that in the backwards, sorry, trying to talk and think and act at the same time, doesn't work real well for me, alright, there we go, okay, so I've got our piston loaded in there, and we tighten this thing up and it uh, compresses those rings around the piston, Get it there. And what this does is it compresses the rings, holds the piston in place, and uh, then we're going to tap it out of there. So I'm going to cinch it up just a little bit more. Boy. Um, not on top of the world, my game here today. 
There we go. All right, now, so I want the skirts clearing so that we can get it in there. On each of these pistons, remember there's a notch and that notch goes towards the front. I also have my rod that's marked number one here and we're going in the number one hole on this thing. So we're gonna set it in there with our notch towards the front. And very gently go down into the cylinder. Okay, and at that point, now this is another one of those playing places where, um, you know, technically everybody wants you to have uh, rod bolt protectors so you don't scratch your crank when you go down. Uh, again, I've found that just being careful, you can accomplish this without having to have those tools. Not that they're expensive, just that I don't have any. Okay, so we have our piston set in there. I'm going to reach one hand up underneath here so I can kind of guide those uh, bolts as they go down. And we're just going to gently tap this until that piston gets down where it's supposed to be. And we have a ring that slipped out. So... Done, so we're going to release it, come back up a little bit. Keep my ring compressors kind of getting old and it doesn't always uh, cinch up the way that it's supposed to. But, all right, we'll get back together here and make it work. All right. that compressor down. There we go. Now the ring is sliding down in. There we go. Got our rings in place. Uh, this is going down on the cylinder. Got my hand down here to keep the bolt from scratching the crank. We're going to drive it down until that bearing seats on the crank. Right there, and that's when you know you've got it far enough. All right, now normally I would just leave it in that position, but I'm going to flip the motor up so we can see the bottom of it better. Um, yeah, so I can put those rod bolts on there. All right. So now, I've got my connecting rod cap. It has a number stamped on the side of it, and that number has a mate on the side of the rod itself, and that number's down here, so I'm going to put this cap on to match that. And there we go, got that in place. Now, for this build, since this motor's been a part, I'm going to say at least this is a, probably the third build on it, at least. I went ahead and bought new uh, connecting rod nuts, and I'm going to put those on there. They were really cheap, um, and I figured, well, that would be good insurance for uh, not uh, causing a problem here. So, again, if this was a, a new turn crank and a new set of uh, connecting rod bearings. I would have gone through and plastic gauge them to make sure that everything matches up and works correctly. But since this has all been together before, I'm not going to worry about that. We are going to get ourselves Snug these bolts down right now. I'm not going to torque them. Um, but I do want them snugged up. There. All right. 
So that's the basic process of putting this thing together. Uh, kind of the last piece of it when you get them all in here, I'll flip the motor completely upside down, I think, and I will torque each one of these to the torque settings um, that uh, the factory calls for. But right now, uh, I'm going to put these other pistons and rods in there. I have uh, the four down this side. The one I'm still missing is the number two hole. So we're not going to do it well, right at the moment. I'm going to do the one, three, five, and sevens first, and then I'll flip the motor engine stand over and do a couple of the others. I want to leave one out to take with me to the machine shop, make sure I get the correct rod um, again, because apparently there's still two different styles of rod even to choose from. But that's the process. So you put that one in and just repeat your process as you're going down through there. And uh, we'll come back and show you uh, probably when we got them all in place and we're torquing the bolts down, I think it's going to be the next step. So we'll be back in a second. Okay, this is about as far as I'm going to get today. Um, got all four of those pistons in there. Uh, you got the back two in over here. Still... These are the two. I'm going to take one for a sample and one that I need that other rod for. So that's it. I, I'll be, I'm not going to finish this video today. I'll be back and uh, do that in a little, you know, another time when I get those other two rods. But anyway, we've got, uh, I'm not going to torque those connecting rod bolts down yet because I want to get all of them in there. So I do them all at the same time and don't forget something. But uh, there you can see it's been a relatively simple process. It's kind of just time consuming, really. I've spent oh, two hours on this at this point, uh, doing what I've shown on here today. I think maybe a little more than that, maybe even close to three by the time you count getting the pistons on and off and those kind of things. So anyway, just kind of a fun thing to do here. You can go out and build your own power plant for your vehicle. Kind of is a bit of satisfaction in that. So we'll be back and continue this as I get those other two rods in and we'll torque them down and wrap that part up. Okay, so we got her all wrapped up here. Got all the piston assemblies in place and uh, rods are all torqued down uh, to the crankshaft to the correct torque spec. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time showing you how to do that because it's a fairly straightforward process that uh, the other uh parts of the other videos and stuff have shown so i just the main point that i wanted to get to on this video was teaching you about three or four little tricks that i have learned for the first time engine builder and and that is the as we started out how to put a, a piston and wrist pin into a connecting rod without having to press it in so they can use the heat to do that and then how to safely take off your piston rings and safely put piston rings back on without requiring um, a special tool to do it. So those were the big things that I wanted to get covered here in this part of the video. The rest of this is super straightforward. Um, just like so many, I mean, there's hundreds of other videos out there on how to build an engine by people who are probably infinitely more qualified than I am. But I want to wrap up there in this uh episode of the crazy dad's garage by getting that part of this project done so we will come back to you now as we move into the other pieces of getting this engine built and uh hopefully preparing a home to put it in so anyway hope you all enjoyed that and learned a couple things uh have a great day this is eldon signing off from crazy dad's garage